Okay, Wednesday morning in the kingdom. And yes, see my note? I removed the gas tank. Now I'm letting the shop air out a bit. And then I'll start the wood stove because I don't want any fires. Yes, I grew up with my parents burning the gas station. And we were little kids and watching it burn. Yes, gas burns quickly. All right. I'm taking a chance this morning standing in the middle of the yard because it's warm out here. It's minus 8 Celsius, but feels like minus 14, so hopefully the me phone doesn't censor me. Oh, I can see my breath. <sighs> Crest Fresh Mouthwash. Yes, on the OYO scale, minus 18, but feels like plus 7. Ooh, that's confusing. Minus 18, plus 7. Oh, oh, oh. oh well. Ooh, my breath. There we go. All right. So today... Okay, so today Amazon has my first book of my writing career on for free as an ebook from December 27th to the 31st, and it's free. Yes, five days on Amazon, four days on Sesame Street. Those stories were written back in 2003, so that's 20 years ago. We were cat training to a lodge and we got treated like crap, so I wrote a book. Hello, where there are no other competition. We're cat trading, hauling freight there, and if we don't haul it, you're putting it in an airplane. So, hmm, I wonder why the lodge is no longer in business. Oh, well. And then we went and did it again in 2014. We went back to that same lodge to got treated like crap. And, of course, we never got paid. We still owed money there. Oh, and you wonder why I'm retired at such a young age. Yes, enjoying my retirement. Also, too, I don't know where Johnny is. Since his family arrived, they probably used up all his ExploreNet bandwidth. So then ExploreNet throttles you back so you're worse than dial-up. So Johnny probably can't send an email telling me about cuddling on the couch and the family and having fun and the Christmas frolics and stuff. Yes, yeah, because he got turned down, turned, all, turned off almost. Yes, yeah, throttled back. You gotta like that. That's customer service nowadays. That's the way it is in the new world. Treat people like crap, and that's customer service. Also, too, today the staff will be working in her house. She's got to get that wood stove done so I can get my tools back. Yes, my tools. Yes, a man has to have his tools. She has her own tools, but I have to have mine. All right, so today's pro projects will be funded or, uh, I would just say, enjoyed with Newfoundland Vodka. Yes, it's hard to read. It's dark out here. Yes, and it's 9 o'clock. Unreal. The me phone's probably censored me anyways. Okay, so if you guys know anything about Newfoundland, they speak a different language. I know all about it because Zena's birth mother was from Newfoundland. Yes, when the mines were going here, the uh, Newfoundland people came this way to work in the mines and they brought their cousins, relatives, and everything like that. All right. So I know all about how the language changes, okay? And this Newfie, it's called Newfie, Newfie R Vodka. So this will change the way I speak, talk, and act because it's a totally different lingo when you drink Newfoundland Vodka. Yes, it's more, I think they're more known for the screech if you go to Newfoundland. I've never been there. I don't think they'll allow me on the island because you have to go by boat, eh? All right, let's do a quick scroll this way. Seems how we're censored. All right, look at the sun coming up. It's strange having this warm weather with clear skies. Usually it's the opposite. Clear and cold, but here it's warm and clear. Oh, the Swedish kid was correct. Everything's all screwed up. Just look at that. So today is too warm to do anything. We should be out in the wilderness, Alaska, but in northern Manitoba. But it's too warm. Yes, too warm. We want cold to get the filming, the dramatics, the exhaust fog. Uh-oh, the stove self lit itself. I just threw some wind on top of the embers. Okay, but it should be aired out. I got the fan and everything. I don't want to blow the shop up and record it on camera. Ooh, the views we will get. Yes, and look at that. There's the moon over there. And that's a contrail from an airplane. Yes, the contrail. Yes. All right. We just about made a full rotation here. I'm probably censored. If not, oh, well, we'll keep going. But it's funny skies, funny daylight, everything like that. Me being colorblind, I can see the difference. Yes. 
All right, I better go before I'm censored, which I probably are. Oh, well. Here comes the boss. What's up, Kingdom followers? Sir Rodney live from the closed West Strand, so it's nice and quiet, and I can talk to you. We have big news. All the merchandise that you see on the website, all the King of Obsolete stuff, should be here mid-January, available for purchase on the website. But I just wanted to jump on real quick and show you guys. These are ready right now. King of Obsolete coffee mug, signed by the man himself. So if you're interested in you should know how to get a hold of me. Send me an email, and I'll figure out how much to ship them to you. And I think they're about $15.99 for the coffee mug. I know the shipping, unfortunately, is probably going to be about the same. But if you want one, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Shoot me an email. If not, ask Joey. Joey will give you my email. And uh, you could be the proud owner of a nice, new, signed Joey Barnes coffee cup. Talk to you later. Okay, for the wood smoke channel, wood stove smoke channel. Look at the sunrise coming up and we got the wood smoke going. I didn't even have to use a, uh, accelerants to get the fire going or the Bunsen burner. So that's looking good. Okay, I'm in the pleasure room of the kingdom. Okay, it's a mess. But then again, Einstein's desk was a mess because he was always thinking and working and stuff like that. So this is the IH cat parts. Oh, we can't forget all the broken thermostats. Yes, quality products of the new world. All right, so according to my calculations in the notes, we have the front engine crank seal, the TD6 and the TD9 are the same. There's two in here, okay. So we're good to go on taking the front cover off to see what the timing marks are on the TD9 known as Kijiji. Because somebody could have put the engine together wrong and had the timing out and then they just changed the mag knowing that that's what it takes to get it to start and run. Okay, I had to stop the video there because I had the burps. All right, here's your TD6 steering clutches for required. You put two side by side and same as the TD9s. Okay, so there's the part numbers and everything like that. I'll zoom in, pause. Zoom in, pause. And the TD18, zoom in and pause. Okay, so having this stuff in inventory speeds up production when you were taking cats apart. Plus, I bought this stuff back when it was fairly reasonable. And also, too, this item, these items, all this small stuff in your inventory, has no dollar value when you're dead. Yes, your estate sale, this stuff will bring nothing. The auctioneer will actually cost, you'll char cost you money to get this stuff ready for sale. So that's why I say, let's get these cats back together. And then they're worth something at my estate sale versus parts on the shelf or parts in the shed. Okay, totally unprepared. Maybe it's that Newfoundland vodka. Or maybe I'll have to drink some more. Maybe I should switch over to Titty Vodka, but here we are. I'll do a screenshot for the end of the video. Wednesday morning in Whoville, and it's just after 10 a.m. I woke up sick as a dog. I'm not sure how I got it, but I got the flu that's going around in Whoville. There's a lot of people sick here right now, so I'm going to be taking it easy today. Not sure how much I'll get done, so my video may be pretty short. But now I'm going to head on over to the kingdom and get some medication so I can head on back into bed and get better for you guys. Got the skidoo out, now it's time to head on over to the kingdom and get some medication. I also have to drop off his supper. He'll be having chicken nuggets tonight. Now let's get going. Just made it to the kingdom. I came to grab some medication here. This is what we got from one of the followers as well, so I'm hoping this will help me with my cold. I will be taking it easy today so I don't push myself because I do have to get better so I can do the wood stove and everything in the basement. Now let's head on back into Whoville. Just made it back from the kingdom. Now it's time to put the skidoo away and let the dogs out. I'm going to be taking it extra easy today and not pushing myself. I was going to do the wood stove and that, but I'm also waiting for my little helper. He has to work all day today and I need help hauling that wood stove into the basement. Now it's time to head inside and go lay down. 3 o'clock coffee and I just woke up not that long ago. I forgot to do a video at lunchtime, but my little helper dropped off some soup and some orange juice for me. That way I had something to eat and drink because I'm not feeling very well. Now it's time to head inside and let the dogs out and then I'm going to finish up my laundry here and head back into bed. Went to take my garbage out, so I figured I'd give you guys a view from the side of my house here. My bedroom window is just off to the side, and you can see the sunset coming. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and do the weather.
almost 5 o'clock, and this is the temperature we're sitting at today. It's negative 2 degrees Celsius, which is 28 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It is almost dark. Look at that sunset. The street lights have come on, and over here we even have the moon peeking out. It sure is bright and big. I don't think my phone will zoom in on it. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in, and make supper. I'm not feeling the greatest, so it's just going to be soup again and my day. Okay, 11 o'clock in the kingdom, and I'm done the emails, the messages, the YouTube comments. I replied to most of them as best I can, but that's part of being, how would you say, a YouTube influencer or being famous. All right, so first thing I did when I came out here this morning was take pictures of the motor because we're going to take some of the motor apart. But also, too, I'm also questioning when I drained the antifreeze out of the block heater there, okay? That's a 1500 watt circulating block heater. It came out clean. It wasn't plugged or clogged or anything like that. But also too, back when we get these cats, we have the thermostat housing off over here, okay? Over there, okay? We have that off. We also take the pressure washer and stick it in there and flush it out there. So we also put the pressure washer down in there and we try and clean it out. So maybe the block is clean enough and it was just the rad. But we have to take the water pump off the front here because we're going to take this front cover off to see all the gears and everything like that to see why the timing is out, okay? Oh, and here's how we plumb the circulating block heater in. It goes to the back of the head here on the TD cats, okay? The diesel motors do not go to the front where the thermostat housing is, which has the thermostat removed because all you're going to do is heat the rad, the water or the antifreeze in the top of the rad. Okay, this is the other side of the diesel motor, which is the gas motor. Yes, this is gas. So it has the carburetor, everything to make it run on gas. It has the magneto, and that's what we're worried about, the timing. All right, so this is what we do to make the GM one wire alternator fit. And one belt fits all the cats, okay? So we don't have 20 different sizes of belts from the TD-18 down to the TD-6 and stuff like that. We make one belt fit all the alternators and it's just a simple bracketry. All you're using is square tubing, putting a hole through it and then magically make it line up with the pulley. Also too, on these pulleys here, okay. Oh, I'll have to go to the other side. Oops, sorry about the burp. Also, too, when you get your cat for the first time or whatever, soak it down, okay? The water pump pulley here means that the belt is usually rotten and crap, and you see this one is not lined up. First thing we do is soak these grooves down right in here, okay? Soak them down good and wait. Don't get rammy because this bolt here is supposed to be lined up with that hole, and this is collar spin, so that tightens the belt, all right? You back it off to loosen the belt, push it in to tighten the belt, but we're gonna take this water pump off and make sure that the water pump is tight because the old cats, these get loose, all right? And also too, that's the same water pump on the gas motors, I think they're all the same. So you can get parts at Steiner's and tractor on the online and stuff like that because these are a common water pump that IH used, okay? So we will be correcting that. But we also have to loosen the belt off to take out to take the water pump off and then we can get down into here to see all get the cover off to see what the timing is but once we take the water pump off i can look in here to see how much sludge is into the motor okay lunchtime in the kingdom oh gotta adjust the lily my tom and mike there we go totally unprepared oh wait okay all right so let's get to the water pump here we got the collar or the pulley thing backed off, the belt came apart. Everything is good on this water pump. It's nothing, how would you say, no dramatics or anything like that. I checked the propeller. Propeller is good. There's no pantyhose or anything like that caught in it. Okay, everything is good. Over here, I made a mistake again for the first time in my life. When I made this bracketing here, I didn't put a hole in it, so it filled up with water. So now there's a hole in this side there. And that's the washer from the inside for the alternator. Okay, so I put it, put it, taking things apart the way it's got to go back together. Plus, yeah, I got to use these pictures as my memory. All right, so over here, we're getting close here. So they put a little set screw down in there, right there to get the pin out. Once we get the set screw out, the pin out, and then we can go after that big nut and start figuring things out. All right, as you can see, we don't have a pressure washer because the pressure washer really doesn't work up here, and it'll make a mess inside the shop. We do all our pressure washing in the summer using that beautiful muskeg water. So right now, using the air hose 
And the blow gun. Okay, the blow nozzle. Oh, I got the burbs. I ate those peanuts, okay? The wire brush and the scraper. And the hand wire brush. So that's all we're doing to get this thing clean. Oh my goodness, I could collapse here burping so much. All right, so that's how we do it. We don't have big money, we don't have a fancy shop, but we're getting it done, and that's the main thing. All right, let's go have some lunch, and we're going to be switching over today. Yes, yesterday we had a successful day with the Titty Vodka, so I think that'll be the drink of choice while we're working on the TD9 known as Kijiji, because it's so stressful. He has so many issues, like my first ex-wife. Okay, December 27th, and we're in the kingdom. I got the pressure washer outside, and I carried out all these pieces one by one and pressure washed it. I can't stop or go, have to go non-stop because everything is going to freeze up on me. Okay, this rad was plugged pretty good through the fins because this uh, is an ag, ag cat from around Winnipeg, and they have that black gumbo soil, so I didn't pressure wash it enough when I first got it. But I got the fins all nice and, or the tubes nice and clean, when the pressure washer is blowing through, it works out pretty good. All right, look at the flags. They're in their natural state of being limp. And the sun is setting down over there. Yes, welcome to Wilderness Alaska. But at the end of the world, better known as, oh, better known as Northern Manitoba. I'm freezing out here. Okay, once I was done outside having fun with the pressure washer, I mean having a shower, I got everything put away, but I brought the pressure washer in here to take it apart because you don't do it outside because things freeze. I took the pressure washer, stuck it in the water pump hole here and up in the thermostat housing. And I got nice clean water coming out here, but it's not accurate because the cat is at a slight angle and there's the drain right there in the middle. But it's the thought that counts. I knew when I put this thing together, I had it clean in the block, but I didn't clean the rad good enough. Maybe I was too drunk or something. But the main thing is I have it clean. I think I'm quite confident that I don't have to take these cover plates off and check everything out in there. I think we're good to go because it these systems are designed to have a little bit of sludge and how you say plug tubes and stuff like that. Plus, we're not at the fair, you know, at the parade or the fairgrounds having a parade. You know, driving through at 100 plus Fahrenheit degrees. Yes, I said Fahrenheit. Did you notice that? 100? Because when we grew up down south, that was the hot temperature. Now, when it hits plus 30 Celsius, that's too hot for us. If it hits plus 40, that's way too hot. All right, so let's get the air hose out, blow the water off. And also, too, Kijiji never came with a stump pan. There's a note saying that I got the wrong stump pan on here because he's an ag cat. So I might just drop the stump pan to get more room or whatever. I'll have to think about it when I have some vodka in my coffee. But let's get this thing dried off and get this cover off so we can see if the timing marks are correct or not. And i get just dying to have one some more of that titty vodka. Okay, coffee time in the kingdom. I mean, titty vodka time. Yes, we're still on holidays here. All right, this little set screw in here was no problem to drill out. See, there's your pin and that set screw holds it in the middle. I just use your basic, how would you say, jet drill bit here. Nothing fancy. It's not kryptonite, you know. But the thing is, there's a fellow on the IH page there on Facebook. I mean, drama book. All worried about drilling. Okay, when you're drilling the the set screw out, that's you can drill that. As soon as you hit this, you can't drill this. And that crank, at the end of the crank is rock hard. So your little, how would you say, cheap drill bits are low profile or low ah, low money budget drill bits will not uh, so you know when you're through the set screw all right and then we jacked the, the motor up so we got this loose here this is strange this here is tight on here usually on cats they're worn out because the thing's been bounced over every rock in the north and everything like that but that is tight so now we have to figure out how to get that off but on the pulley here i did have a big socket but somebody's had this apart because you can see the chisel marks, okay? So they had it apart. So I have the socket. All right. We put the pulley on, uh, the pull, pulley puller on the pulley. But you can see the little marks there. I've had the brass punch here. All right. See the brass punch? We went around and around and around and gave it shock waves. Yes, yeah, shock waves to kind of loosen it up. We put the puller on and we used a wrench. Yes, the wrench, because we want to feel this thing coming off, all right? If you put the impact on, you can strip your threads in here. You can shove the threaded rod farther into the crank, or you can bend the little brackets or break everything. 
So that's why we use the wrench and take your time, okay? Because you get one chance to do it and it's going to cost you more to fix it, all right? So let's go have some titty vodka in the coffee. We're having a good day. Hopefully we can get the front of this. Oh, also too, I marked it. All right, we centered it when the pulley was on. We marked it to the timing mark of the mag. And then over here, there's the mag. That's number one cylinder, one here. And the impulse in here went snap, okay? We'll get more into that. But if you don't have a snap, you have problems, yeah. All right, so then how do I know where that is if I take this apart to see what the timing marks are, okay? Because I'm learning too, because I've probably done this a couple of times and got drunk and forgot. So I used my tape measure and measured from here to the edge of there. So I know it's 10 and 15 16. So if I move this here, this way or that way, it'll affect the timing marks on the gears. So now I know that that is timed with the crank to the little pointer thing, okay? So now we know that this is might be right, it might be wrong, we're not sure. That's why we're taking this apart to understand. And I did have the injection pump off and it's one notch out because that was the talk on the IH uh, cat page or dozer page or whatever that they were timing them. But I marked it that this one was marked that way so we put it back together. All right, so that's my memory, all this yellow paint or paint markers, stuff like that. Oh, let's go. That titty vodka is just, oh, I can taste it now. Okay, we got the front cover off and for timing the mag, because we took that ag pump off and everything like that, we were sticking a camera in here, one of those plumber's cameras or whatever. You know, those small ones you stick in there and that way we could see what was the timing marks were. And that's the hour meter there that goes over this hole here. All right, let's walk to the front. Be very careful. Thoughts required here. All right. Okay. I'm not prepared here. Oh, well. Okay. Let's go over here. All right. Okay. You can see. Oh, my cord's hooked. All right. We have the welding rod. It's going down the injector hole here. And we have the valve cover off. Okay. So we pop the cover off. Okay. So here's your magneto right there. And we're looking in the little hole here with that little camera and we're put, doing the paint marker on the gears so then we could time it we spent uh, quite a bit of time this is we've tried about five or six magnetos on here we even took them off a running cat uh, right beside it and walked over and put it on and this thing will not start on gas like it's terrible all right so the timing marks line up here and nothing else nothing and I mean nothing. I don't know if the camera is going to show anything. All right. So there, I did a quick search in my books and everything like that. But the thing is, is IH built farm tractors. Farmers are smart. Back in the 40s and the 50s, people were smart. Okay. It was called common sense, which the world does not have today. So there's three divots in there. I don't know if we can see it. There's three right there. One on the crank. And then two on the injection pump, okay? So this should time it, all right? So when I first took it off, I counted the gears and it seemed to be a space of four and one was five, right? Because nothing lined up. So then I went around and rotated the motor and did the wire test up in the injector hole here. We have the spark plug out. We're double checking to see where top dead center is, okay? So every time I turn around, I can get this one to line up and that's the only one that'll line up. All these other timing marks are out. So now I think I'm going to pop this gear out and time it and see what happens. So if this person who put this motor together was one tooth out, anytime it goes around in a rotation, it's out. Okay, so that's not timing itself. So the more it runs, the more it gets out and then it comes back to, ta to being happy. Because I've never seen this before. Like... You spin a motor around, it doesn't matter. The timing mark should line up. It's just common sense. A diesel motor has one extra gear than a gas motor. So the mag doesn't work because the mag actually turns the other way. So on my mags, since I have gas motors and diesels, I always put the arrow on to show which way they have to turn, okay? So at my age, I mark everything. So let's pop that gear off and see if we can get timing marks to line up. Okay, I took the... 
this gear off okay this bolt goes through to the other side it's not anchored okay but it doesn't fall through so you have to use the impact so i got this to come off there's shims and pieces in the back i was very careful all right so then i timed it perfectly to the marks okay so then when you spin it around and spin it around they don't come back into the same place okay but the thing is is we don't know how if it was out of time or anything because i had to take this gear off which is the injection pump to get this one out because everything is sloped and tapered so the only thing we did today is we have basically have a peace of mind knowing that it's been timed correctly because we never knew that okay so i uh, counting the teeth when you first take it apart you see that the line they're not lining up like they're out okay but it's probably the way that gear works out that it goes around say 16 times or whatever and it comes back to being happy medium so this works out the two revolutions of the crank okay so that lines up okay so we're good to go so we have a peace of mind knowing that it's been timed correctly to what i have done and i got the bolt back in and nice and tight all right let's see if we can stand up i timed the injection pump to zero but they're saying you're supposed to be one degree more but we want everything at zero so we know it's going to start and run and then over here i made a little template for taking the bolts out of the how over the front housing and also too the injection plate cover has the copper washers okay don't lose those because that's very important and oh that's the bolts for the uh, the plate this is the copper washers for the valve cover okay we've never had the valve cover off or anything like that so it was good to know and we've got it apart we did the wire test down the injector the valves are all going we spin the crank around we watch it and the intake valve is bringing in the pressure or the gases or the diesel and then it gets, gets compression and with the wire down there we know it's number it's that top dead center so this worked out pretty good it was a learning curve i'm learning and i still can't figure out why you spin it around and the timing marks don't line up but you figure you know it's spinning around it should all line up but oh well that's part of the learning okay let's go check on the flags okay the dogs are all excited there's the moon it's over there all right let's scroll quickly so it's kind of funny it's nice and warm here i am working in a small little shop with a wood stove the only thing the old timers didn't have back in the 40s would be the air impact but here i am using a select amount of tools nothing fancy nothing from snap on nothing really spectacular just old school sitting there thinking drinking my titty vodka and reflecting on what the old timers would do back in the day when it was simpler times look at the flags they're in their natural state all right let's go walk the dogs drink some more titty vodka man that's good stuff we're gonna have to buy bigger bottles because now i look like an alcoholic when i got all these empty ones all right let's go let's go make the video and we'll talk to you later